Um, all right, so you're two in this defense. What, yeah. uh, what can you guys do to sort of build on, on what you did last year? Oh, well, it's about finding the mistakes that we had, finding the things that uh, we didn't do as well as we wanted to and correcting those mistakes. You know, it doesn't have to be complicated. We don't have to go to the moon, you know, find another planet, right? <laughs> I think the simplest thing is to find the things that we did wrong and correct those things. Is, is that kind of nice to be able to build on, on that success you had? You know, obviously there hasn't always been that kind of stability here, but just sort of to build on what you've had. Yeah. Nice yeah, the good thing about, you know, when a team has success, or whether it's little or a lot, uh, th there's a culture that's built. And when the culture is built, then there's a system that people can, uh, g you know, step right into, right, and continue to do the same things, uh, find the things that uh, will elevate and what they can uh, use to build on that same culture that has already been there. So I think for us, you know, it's good to see that, you know, we still have the same culture, the same attitude, the same principles, right, that we could just go right in uh, and, and put forward. What kind of taste, well, sorry, what kind of taste is that Houston game left? Uh, not a good one. Uh, not a good one. I mean, obviously we lost. So, you know, anytime that that, that is not um, a W or a win, then it's, it's, you know, no bueno. How much of a difference do you feel going into year four versus as a rookie? Like, how much do you think you've grown? How much more comfortable are you now? Uh, well, each year is a progression, you know, with experiences, with time, uh, with meeting new coaches, meeting new players. There's always something that you're feeding off of. There's always something that you're growing off of. So I think that each year, you know, every, even every day, right, even every day we grow 1%. So I think that, you know, the more that, I, that you're here, the more intensity that you put to the time that you have, uh, the more you'll grow. So. How much, especially as a leader, I mean, I know this room looks so different this year with Awok gone, Taki gone. Ah, I'm a dog. Wow, man. <laughs> what, is it, what is it like now? I mean, you're very yeah. quickly have become kind of like the old guard, quote unquote. Yeah, you know, we still got we still got Jay Hicks, so, you know, I ain't, I ain't too old yet. Yeah. But, no, I mean, it's good to, again, there's always an evolution, right, with the system that you build. So I think the evolution for me is, is kind of starting to step into more of a, a veteran role, more tut tutoring and, you know, hey, look. You know, I think that you could do this better. Guys looking up to you saying, hey, look, you know, what, what can I do uh, with my technique here for uh, me to be better at this, right? So, of course, there's, there's everybody, every, every student, you know, has to become a master someday. Every master has to uh, start off as a student. So, you know, continuing to progress there. Where, where are you at in that progression, do you think? Right? I mean, I'm a student still, so. <laughs> Do, do you know? Do you, I guess it's kind of weird way thing does. Do you know when you become the master, or does it? Well, the thing, how, the how thing with every ma the thing with every master is they usually they'll say, yeah, you know, I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every wise man, you know, any uh, monks and things like that, right? They all, hey, I don't know anything. I, you know, knowledge is nothingness. You know, all this spiritual stuff that's going on. Uh, but I think that's the beauty about knowledge. That's the beauty about experiences. Is that uh, you know, even with the more that you have, the more kind of humble you are, and you just say, hey, look. You know, I'm still a student. I'm still here to learn. I'm still here to uh, progress in my knowledge and everything that I'm doing. Do you think the game like slowed down for you last year with reading and reacting? I mean, guys talk about that as they get older. Yeah, I mean, slow down. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily, you know, categorize it as slowing down. I think it's, it's more so of just understanding, you know, the positions that are around you, understanding your position more understanding, you know, the offensive personnel and things like that, you start to have more knowledge of the things, right? Uh, you know, for some people, you know, they say it slows down. For me, it's more just, you know, I have a better understanding of the game, better IQ. Yeah. I think coming out of last year, a lot of people, or man, JOK had a great year. How, how did you view last year? Were yeah. you happy with what you did? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, I'm, it's, it's good to kind of get the acknowledgement, you know, the Pro Bowl and everything and, you know, but I mean, I think there's a higher level to it, and whenever there's a high level, you know, there there can't be satis you know, there can't be this satisfying attitude, right? I think for me, it's more so. There's a lot more to do. There's a lot more uh, to to conquer and, and to persevere through. You know, I haven't necessarily gotten the amount of tackles that I want. I haven't gotten the amount of TFLs that I want. I haven't gotten the amount of interceptions that I want. And you know, when I have Dalvin in front of me, you know, it's very hard to see the quarterback. But you know, he will get there at some point. Yeah. <laughs> Where does that anticipation come from? Though? Yeah. That ability to kind of see. There's times when it seems like you see the play before the play happens. Well, I think it's preparation. Uh, it's the coaches. It's my teammates. It's 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 a walk saying, "Hey, look, this is a draw." Or, <laughs> "Hey, hey, look, you know, this is a crack toss." Right? I think you know. For me, it's it's a combination of many things. It's not just my own personal understanding or IQ, but it's all those all-encompassing reasons. You know, the coaches. You know, even. 
the janitors, right? I always give a salute to the janitors. Even the janitors picking up that one towel that was right there, you know, that kind of contributed for me getting that TFL, right? You know, it's a program, it's a team, and all of that kind of circles back to that. It seemed like last year you put on some more weight, more muscle. How, what has that process been like? And yeah. remaining, are you still an alkaline vegan and doing yeah. all that stuff? Oh, yeah, yeah. Nah, I probably would never eat flesh a day in my life again. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nevertheless, you know, it's always a progression as, as well with that. The more information that I get, uh, the more places that I travel, I'm like, oh, okay, this, this you know, particular plant or this particular fruit uh, is a little bit different and I can maybe use this to, you know, maximize my energy, maximize my game. So there's always a progression in, in, in the elevation with that too. Do you feel like you've sort of fine-tuned that stuff now to, you know, your diet, your weight, all of that, so you're yeah. kind of where you want to be? Yeah, I mean, we, we kind of have like a, a platform to which to go off a foundation and then you kind of just add little pieces to the foundation, you know, of just new things that may, new studies that may come out, things like that. Jeremiah, do you give much thought to getting a new contract before you start this season? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, my agents really handle those things. If they, if they, you know, are negotiating, they'll contact me and they'll, you know, um, give me certain prices and things like that. And hey, look, what are you looking for? But I don't give much thought to it. It's, it's really about ball. Is that easy to kind of put out of your mind, or is it a process where you have to remind yourself, hey, don't worry about this. I can't control it. Type of thing? Well, it's about compartmentalization. You know, you, there's a time play for it, and then there's a time to. Focus on football, you know, there's different, you know, you may go home and maybe six o'clock at night, you're done studying and then, okay, you may give some time to it, but there's always a time and a place for everything. Good. That's tough. Uh, let's, let's start with the guy that just talked. What, what did you kind of learn about playing with Jeremiah behind you last year? Uh, put it in one word, the guy's explosive. Like, um, he's definitely a playmaker and uh, I felt like he, he started coming too last year and I feel like he's going to keep growing a, a lot more this year. and. Uh, I, just seeing him on the field, the way like uh, he's just been taking over a little bit this year. It's just like the development over the offseason and just all the experience he got last year. He's going to be one hell of a player. I know you're obviously you're engaged. You're doing all sorts of stuff on the line. But did, were there ever, ever, ever any moments where you saw him make a play? And you're like, man, I can't believe that. Oh, yeah. that a couple times, yeah. It was a couple times. I thought I was going to make the play. And then you just <laughs> come out of nowhere and shoot through the gap. <laughs> and then, like I was saying, you know, TFLs and stuff, making like, and we all celebrating, but uh, yeah, it's a couple times. It's just he just comes out of nowhere, like you don't even know he's over there at one point, and then he just pops up, big play mid. It seemed like watching you last season. I know I talked to you about midway through the year that in this defense, maybe it takes D tackles a little bit to find their groove, find their rhythm. I know Mohurst has talked about that too. Mm -hmm. How did you feel like the second half of the year went for you? Did it feel like okay, we're clicking as a line better as the year went on? Then? Oh yeah, for sure. I felt like uh, we started firing on all cylinders and uh, up front just. Disruptive. We were disrupting everything across the board, uh, week in, week out. And uh, yeah, it definitely took a while because yeah, it, you know, it was a brand new defense for me. And uh, yeah, with other help with other guys, it, just, it started to click. With you individually, I mean, do you think you can take kind of your stats, performance, or whatever to the next level this year now, just having that knowledge of, okay, it's year two in this defense? Oh, yeah, it's always a game plan, especially when you're year two in the defense. And uh, you don't want to improve on what you did the year before. And um, yeah, just already knowing the whole defense and the, how Coach Schwartz thinks and everything, and then what we all expect up front. It's, uh, yeah, the, we, we see the sky's the limit, and we just have to improve on what we started. What's it been like getting to work out here with Michael Hall today and kind mm -hmm. of get to see him? I don't know how much you were around before this at the practices we've oh, yeah. but getting to, to see him and mm -hmm. what he brings to the table. Oh, yeah, he's a super athletic guy, you know, super explosive, super quick, and uh, he's going to bring a whole different dynamic to, uh, up front for us. And, uh, yeah, I want Mike to go out there and ball out week, week one. <laughs> what about Jock working with him? Mm -hmm. kind of energy does he bring as a oh manager? man, that's the energy is it's, it's unmatched. Like Coach Ford says today, he starts on 11 and goes to a 13, and um yeah, it's, it's beneficial for all of us because the techniques he's coaching us up front in the pass rush, in the run game, it's all it's a small detail things we take time to work on is gonna help us take it to the next level up front. You played with Jordan in Minnesota, right? Mm -hmm. So. I guess bringing him in here sort of to fill, I guess, that role that Anthony left. Mm -hmm. what, what does he bring? Oh, man, that's my guy. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I, when we signed him, I was super happy. But, uh, you know, he's a great leader. Uh, he, he, he plays his role to an amazing, extraordinary standard. And uh, he's going to hold everybody else to that standard as well. And, um, yeah, it just he comes in, he's going he gonna to make some plays. And also he's going to help everybody else make plays and help everybody in the right position. Thinking about that Houston game, Dalvin, I mean, the defense mm -hmm. really struggled getting to the quarterback. You guys didn't get a sack. Like, how much does that leave a bad taste in your guys' mouths? Is mm -hmm. it hungrier as a group? Just kind of talk about that. It always makes you hungry. You know, you didn't finish the year like you wanted to. And uh, 
yeah, you know, it makes us super way more hungry because uh, I feel like everybody's been focusing, just making sure like we can elevate every phase of our game up front, especially pass rushes too, as well. Uh, Z coming back. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Does obviously, have that relationship. How how important is that to bring him back? Uh, super important, especially like what we started last year up front. Uh, with Z, Obo, Miles, me, Mo, and all of us returning and stuff. It's gonna the just it's just like we picked up where we left off, and all of us and we know how each other rushes. Each other rush now, and uh, you can just build off for each other and build that chemistry that much more. Last one, I think, for me. But do you think is there any danger to complacency? I mean, you guys are all pretty much the same group mm -hmm. coming back, and you had a good year. Is there kind of a need to fight against complacency? Do you think it kind of comes naturally since you guys are so veteran at this point? Yeah, America? not at all. Because last year doesn't count. It doesn't matter the stats we made last year, the, the record we had. We're zero and zero. We have to start over. And uh, we, everybody's starting at the same level playing field. So last year, complacency is just like it didn't happen when we stepped on this field this year. And I know your guys' room was really tight last year. Mm -hmm. So now everybody, everybody's kind of back here for mini camp. Did you just sort of hit the ground running with everybody? Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> everybody's just in here laughing and everything, uh, picking up plays quick, just like uh, for the guys who weren't here. I just pretty much remembered everything for the most part. And um, yeah, we just came out here and actually got some good work in today and looking forward to tomorrow, too. I apologize if they've already asked you this about, mm -hmm. but Jim was talking about how much more you can, put, you know, like last year, you know, it was like he compared it to a pitcher, you know, throwing last year, you know, just working on the fastball, but like this year, you start, you know, dropping into the change up. And mm -hmm. How much more, because of the, you know, that continuity you have, do you feel like this defense is capable of doing schematically on the field mm -hmm. because of that? you know, that carryover from one year to the I would say a lot more simply because last year was a new defense for a lot of us. Uh, like me, I never played in a defense like this until last year. So a lot of us was, took eight to ten weeks to actually get accustomed to the defense. And now, since we're already accustomed to it, most of us returned. It's just like we're picking up and running, and we just adding more stuff to it. Does it make the... Oh yeah, for sure. Especially like when you uh, before when we see ourselves on the film now, like from the stuff we did last year. That's the expectation. Like it can't be below that standard. So we can start there and build on that. It just makes it like like you said, since most of us are returning, make it way more easy. My apologies to you if you were asked, but red zone mm -hmm. defense. Um, mm -hmm. Jim was talking about it's kind of one of the one of the areas to focus. Just like you mm -hmm. guys have were led the league in so many areas, but that was kind of a, a deficit for you guys. Mm -hmm. What have you seen as you guys have looked at film? I know for up front is uh, we want to be a, a little bit more disruptive up front uh, in the backfield uh, in the red zone because when we make those big plays in the backfield in the red zone it may keep three points or six points off the board so that's the biggest emphasis up front is just we got to be more disruptive on their side of the ball in the red zone. Are you playing more of a nose tackle this year? Uh, I've been playing everything so far. <laughs> Uh, I just feel like uh, whatever Schwartz wants us that we're gonna go out there and go with it. You know, just go ball out with it. So the nose would line right over center. Uh, depends on the defense. It may be over the center, over the guard, or he just might be, you know, a little bit everywhere. So. <laughs> Is it not a big deal? Uh, not necessarily. Not in our defense. It isn't. Jim said last week that um, instead of a bunch of fastballs, there would be change-ups. Mm -hmm. He used a baseball analogy. So what exactly does that mean? Uh, just uh, like I said before, it's just a lot of us are returning. And uh, it took us a, it took a lot of people a while to pick up the defense last year because it was his first time learning defense. Since most of the people knows the defense now, we could just add a lot of more different things he probably withheld last year for us. Yeah, but you know, the line is pretty much intact from last year. Mm -hmm. How much would that be a benefit? That would be a huge benefit because a lot of us uh, up front didn't even play this defense before in our whole career. So uh, just for us to return and we know the expectation we have to set, we could just add that much more to our playbook. What about Quentin Jefferson? Mm -hmm. A guy that maybe has gone under the radar from a free agent signing. 
sign late in the process? What's it been like in the room so far? I've uh, been amazing. Uh, he was out there doing some good work today, some good techniques, and uh, yeah, we all you know we all learn from each other. So the small things is it makes the biggest difference for us up front. And um, Quentin, made, he brings a lot to the room just from his experience. Have you gotten to look at Mike Hall yet? How's he looked so far? Oh yeah, he's looking pretty uh, pretty good. You know, like he's ready and. Um, you know, as a young guy picking up the playbook quick and everything, that makes a huge difference. And um, yeah, he, he, he comes to work every single day and I, I appreciate it. Good. I right, appreciate it. Thanks, Kevin.